It's for the. Awesome. Thanks so much for meeting with me. I've, I've been wanting to chat with you for a while. So hear about your experience and you've done quite a few of these at this point. Um, it's been so cool to chat with people, you know, it's not really just like a testimonial or a call or even that it's more of just how is your experience and and versus reading someone's experience written I feel like it's it invokes a sense of you see their energy you see their emotions and you hear about their experience and how they light up about their experience versus just reading something and being like hmm who wrote that I mean I know I think that all the time when I when I read testimonials I'm like who wrote that did they pay them um, it's just a, such a different experience and you know it's a different transference of the emotion behind it exactly exactly and it really helps you come back into alignment. I feel like the enzymes really bring you mental, physical, emotional, spiritual alignment back into yourself. So that's why people are always telling me, like, I feel more aligned than I ever have. And so I'm curious what kind of like alignment you felt from even just your first cleanse. Like what was the big thing that you noticed? The big wow factor other than 14 trips to the toilet the next day and collecting various pieces of rope and, and unusual items. The biggest thing is my mind not only got really clear and real lucid, but I could see all the dots connecting in my life. I saw the connection between gut health and mental health. All the people who are dealing with dementia and senility and ADD and Alzheimer's and autism, uh, uh, schizophrenia, depression, suicide, that's all because of the toxic overload that's poured through the bloodstream. Really? I also got the connection of why I haven't been able to gain weight in 30 years because I wasn't absorbing nutrients. Which was real exciting, Maddie, because I could see all the raw foodists and all the raw vegans and all the fruitarian then aren't quite exactly as healthy as they could be because they never cleaned out all the life they had and all the crap they eat prior to turning into a fruitarian or a raw foodist. They never did the deep dive. Yeah, it's, it's not enough to just eat clean and exercise. We need to do something more. And I mean, like you're saying, absorption is super, super important. It's like people are always like, why do things just go through me? I have a fast metabolism. I'm like, no, your metabolism is actually extremely sluggish. You're just not absorbing anything. So your body's just like, boop, push it through. And then you wonder why you have all these sensitivities because there's just so many free floating proteins in the system. It's a whole cesspool. Like you can look normal on the outside, but it could be a whole bunch of junk going on inside. And that's mm -hmm. what makes this cleanse so much different. Like it's not just a cleanse. Like this is a recalibration. This is revitalization revitalization it brings you back to yourself and i've only done a little bit of other cleansing um when i found zen cleanse it was i would already I had already been in the cleansing sphere for about a year wasn't really making any progress i was putting myself into oxidative stress you know how it goes like you're just trying to figure something out and when i found zen cleanse daniel was just telling me about certain parts of it and i was like oh my gosh like this is something that i need because I was sort of at this like dead end, couldn't really figure out why I was still feeling like crap and couldn't, didn't really know the, the way to go from there. So then I did the rainbow cleanse and the very second day I had mucoid plaque come out of me that was literally the size and width of my forearm. And I had like five of those releases and I was like, holy cow, I'd, I'd seen some mucoid plaque, but they were like strings and like not the Rope. size of my arm. Like, whole, like, holy crap. And I lost nine pounds after my first rainbow cleanse. And I was like, I didn't have nine pounds to lose. But I guess I did. It's pretty crazy. Yeah. And Surprise. I would say that, that was my biggest, like, aha moment. But the I would say even bigger was after the cleanse, when I just noticed myself was just, I don't know, I was just flowing more. I was able to experience life in a different way i felt more grounded i felt like okay this is the direction that i'm going i see it in clients all the time they do one cleanse and they're like oh I'm, i feel like my liver wants another cleanse versus before they do the cleanse they're like i don't know what my body needs it's like we come back into that center where we can actually experience life and i would say that was like my aha moment did you have like a specific moment that you were just like whether it was during the cleanse or after the cleanse that you were just like oh this is so different than anything I've experienced. Well, it, it, it happened 
the, the first thing you have to realize who's ever going to be watching this is that you really need, you just owe it to yourself to take two days off from your life. Because the one day you're following everything, half an hour of water, half an hour of enzymes, half an hour, blah, 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 all the way down to 930 at night, and you better stay near the hot water source, the toilet, and your bedroom. Right? So, so when that's over, things start cleaning up. Your body starts clearing up. Your mind starts understanding things you didn't because you had toxins in your bloodstream. You couldn't access uh, the, 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 the pathways to your higher self or to your ability to have visions and, and transmissions was interfered with. <clears throat> and it was so, it's so wonderful to be able to go, wow, I understand things I didn't understand before. And all I did was clean out my gut or my liver. And I have people who've watched me over the many, many decades. I've been a wellness practitioner since 79, and I got into the raw food journey in 1977. <clears throat> and back in the 70s and 80s, there's no internet. There's nothing to compare what you're going through with anybody. So there was no mentoring. There was no coaching. There was no support team. All that is available thanks to Telegram, and particularly with the Zen Ken community. That, that really blows me away. Back then, you had nobody to bounce off of because there was only authors and people in Boston and somewhere else, and you can really have the kind of uh, support structure we have now. Amen, totally. It's just a totally different sphere. And I feel like, at least the coaching that I do, there is no wrong way to do these cleanses, but there is a right way. There is a right way to do it. Having the support of somebody who's been through it guiding you through it, telling you exactly like what you need to know, like explaining symptoms and explaining how your releases are different. It's, it is integral to the, the longevity of the experience. You know, it's like you can do the cleanse and then if you don't know any better, you can go back to eating pizza and French fries the next day. And it's not one, it's not going to make you feel very good, but you're not going to know any better because no one's coaching you. And that's why I think it's so important that we have this chat where people can ask these questions, they can get a little triggered based on the answers. They're not going to be want to want to be told like, just feel that emotion, just feel those feelings. Just you got to experience all the symptoms that are coming up that are new. It's like you have to sit with that. I didn't even see gallstones in my liver cleanse until I'd gotten to five liver cleanses. I didn't even see them. I saw like little tiny ones. I saw mostly the, the chaff. I was really discouraged, but there was something in me that was like, keep going, keep going. And I've had clients do one intestinal cleanse. And they're like, oh, it didn't make me feel any better. And they stop. And it's like, mm, yeah, it's so frustrating because you just want to help them. But you have to first feel it yourself. And if you're not in full belief that like this could be something that is game changing for you, maybe you're not going to continue on that path. And that's what makes this cleanse so much different. I'm not sure about your, your cleansing history, but like, how would you, how would you say that this cleanse is, is different than other styles of cleansing, whether it be like other types of fasting, water fasting, or dry fasting, or just different ex other cleansing experiences. So when I heard about the mucoid plaque, it was Bernard Jensen's work, intestinal cleansing. And then I tried all that and used all their products and then discovered Richard Anderson, Dr. Richard Anderson, who had the Rise and Shine program. And everybody really thought that was great. We all jumped on that. But these things took weeks, weeks you know, watching little, little, little improvements here and there. But the Zen cleanse is 24 hours. And the best way I can describe the power of these enzymes is not your mom's ordinary enzymes, guys. This is not the enzymes you find on the average market that's only fermented for two months. We're talking more than three years. These guys have taken it to a whole other level. These are artists. They know how the body performs when you got the right enzymes. So uh, when I teach people about the Zen cleanse, I say, guys, this is a category all into itself. You can't compare it with anything else. But when 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 my friend Z Chita Matt, Chita Matt Senna, you might have heard of Matt Senna. He's a student and friend of mine, so he turns me on to it. Now, I trust my intuition. At one point, Matt's starting to dialogue and tell me more and more about it. And I said, ah, I got it. Sign me up. And, and I'm at that place with my life, which I've done with other modalities, where I just, got, I just trust my intuition. I don't need evidence. I don't need peer review articles. It's like, I got it. Let's do it. I was the same way. I was the same way. I would say I'm more of like a guinea pig for natural healing. 
but that's where I got lost in the maze of natural healing before I found Sun Cleanse. So I was just trying this avenue. I was trying MMS. I was trying like heavy oxidizers. It was putting my body through so much stress. And I had no idea because I was just trying to find something. I was really sick. I'd been around about 18 different drugs and had been really addicted to two of them and just all sorts of like problems going on in my liver and things that were never really diagnosed, but couldn't find any answers. And when I saw, I literally saw the webpage for Zen Cleanse and I was like, yeah, this is it. This is yeah, totally no question, it. No questions. No questions. And at first I was like, oh, these are expensive. Like, but there was something in me that was like, you got to do this right away. And it's always when you're super aligned with something, it just happens to, to come in. Like if you're ready for this type of medicine, it will come to you. But if you're not, then maybe you won't either, you won't have a good experience or you won't even find the cleanses because the enzymes are very quantum. And when you're more attuned to that level of frequency, you're going to attract it. And if you're not ready for it, like there's been several clients that I have who are resistant to doing the cleanses because they can just feel that it's something that's going to absolutely blow up, blow up their lives in amazing ways. But like, as the ego is like, I don't want to do this because it's scary. So they don't even open the box. They're just sitting there. And I'm like, hey, how'd your liver cleanse go? And they're like, I haven't opened uh, haven't the box started. yet. I haven't started yet. And it's very common because it's, you know, there are intelligent beings, parasites in our body that are telling you not to open that box. And it's they really, are, wi it's really are, wild. <laughs> well, parasites have a strong life urge. And if you come after them with wormwood and clove and all the typical anti-parasitic herbs, et cetera, they'll just relocate, <clears throat> you know, until you really hit them hard with the enzymes, they're going to camp out and, you know, use you as a host. That's what they do. Exactly. And they hide, you know, it, you have to sneak attack. I used to call it hunting when I was starting parasite <laughs> fencing. I'd be like getting up in the middle of the night and be like, I'm going to do this enema. I'm going to, I, I was, I was crazy. I was just trying to find something. And this takes all the guesswork out of it. You know, it takes the guesswork out of it. You have the protocol already set. It's food. It's not like a heavy oxidizer. It's not ozone. It's not something that's going to actually cause serious die off. I mean, you could still definitely have sort of healing crises, but not in the same way that like MMS or ozone is going to have you experience. And it makes the ease of protocols just so much easier for people to go through the cleanse, whether they want to do the one day or they want to do a rainbow cleanse and they can see results quickly. Like my first mucoid plaque, I think I, it took me like months to get it out. And I was so excited by it. And then I was like, but I still don't feel very good. What was this for? And you yeah. just lose hope. You know, it's that, it's as Daniel always says, the maze of natural healing is a very deep maze. And unless you have some way of like a beacon of light guiding you through it, you're just going to go boop, 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 just like going through the maze, trying to, trying to figure things out, spending so much money trying to find something. And people are always like, oh, this is so expensive. I'm like, actually, it's not because it's saving you money. You are not going to have to buy a whole bunch of supplements to supplement whatever's going on inside your body because you're fixing it. You're fixing and it a lot your, faster. It's your insurance to not have to go to a doctor. Absolutely. Yeah. And as I like to tell people, it's your golden ticket back to wellness. And the neat thing that I've noticed, now I also work with urine therapy a lot. You might have picked up on that. Um, but what I've noticed is the people who are cleaned out the toxicity, the toxic overload, the fatty deposits, the mucoid plaque, their brain chemistry, not their brain is not only doesn't have toxins being poured up into the bloodstream and reabsorbing into the brain, causing all those problems. But what happens is the chemistry changes in the brain. There's a reset and homeostasis comes back in alignment. And when your mind gets clear, that way you can see the bad choices that you used to make and choose better. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's not even just like the chemical change in the gut bacteria and the gut microbiome, but it's literally that for me, I've noticed it with the liver cleanse the most, because that was where most of my congestion, almost 99% of the congestion in my body came from my liver, which most people does, um, as I would have this sort of depression stage after a cleanse, I'd feel euphoric. I'd feel so amazing. And then a couple of days later, I would yeah. be like, I'm reaching for chips and reaching for things that 
provided comfort, but they didn't actually. Um, and it's that ego death. It's kind of like a plant medicine ceremony it, that you experience that, that ex I don't even know how to really describe it in words, the feeling of being next to something that is your ego and being aware of it for maybe the first time. It's like that feeling of emptiness, but simultaneously fullness. You're mm -hmm. empty because the enzymes are, are doing its work and you don't have anything in your system, which is when we reach for things like smoking a cigarette, smoking weed, drinking, eating, sex, mm -hmm. all sorts of things. And we have to sit with that feeling, especially with the rainbow cleanse, because it's seven days. You have the four days in between that are the maintenance. Um, mm -hmm. What would how, how did you manage the feeling of emptiness or what came up during that time? Are you I'm drinking enzymes on, right now? <laughs> I'm, saying, I'm sipping on detox S. I love um, it. <laughs> this, this, and, and even though I've gone already out of the rainbow cleanse, I'm still doing the maintenance cleanse. So I've got enzymes coming through me all day long. I'm still having three or four bowel movements a day and basically eating fruit, live spirulina, shivamba, occasionally I'll have a green salad. But I, I have no interest in food. I mean, the, the place that I've been watching people get to is liberation from food slavery. I mean, the people are really hooked on food. They'll never consider a fast, much less doing a cleanse. You can tell who's running their show. Wow. Yeah. Liberation from food. Wow. It's food slavery. And we're going to have this conversation, Maddie. I'm sure you're going to have a lot with the Zen community is that what screwed us up is using food as a reward and punishment. If you finish your plate, you get the pudding, you get the dessert. If you do this, if you don't, you get the punishment. You don't get it, you have time out, blah, blah, blah. So without that polarity going on and you're not being drawn by those two internal forces, <clears throat> this is the beautiful thing about moving into fruitarianism is that you're not eating because of the belief system that you're missing something and you're run by malnutrition mentality. You're eating out of pleasure. I love my papayas. I love my mangoes. And, you know, it's peach season still. I'm still finding peaches at the store. So you're, you're, you're more geared toward food that makes you feel good, that tastes good. Not that you're eating it because, oh, it's going to provide amino acids and protein. No, 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 no. That's not even in the conversation anymore. Mm, yes. Oh, my gosh. This is speaking to me as a, I, I was a professional ballet dancer for about 18 years. And I experienced pretty intense eating disorder. And I had this broken relationship with food, with exercise, with my body, with every, I'm very, very, very intuitive with my body. I can feel things that most people can't. They're like, how do you feel that? And I'm like, I don't know. It's overwhelming for me. But at the same time, yeah. I would numb myself with food to the point that I couldn't feel anymore. Or on the other side, I wouldn't eat at all. And it's like, it's that finding that balance. And this was, this has been really hard for me to figure out, like, especially when you do the cleanse and you absorb more nutrients, you don't have to eat as much. So for me, I'm a very active person. I do a lot of exercise. I'm doing a lot of things and finding the balance of like, how much do I actually need and how much is up here telling me that I need? And exactly that liberation from food slavery. It's, um, I'm still in it. You know, it's more of a mental thing. I've done so many cleanses but I'm still battling the, the balance. So it's significantly different. I can, I definitely am like, I'm not eating that because I know it doesn't make me feel good. I'm going to go towards foods that are fresh. They're green. I love my papayas. I love my mangoes, my dragon fruits, like local cuisine. And that's what Daniel's really helped me with. He's, he's like, you know, don't try and eat the same thing you're eating in Colorado because that's not native to the environment that you're living, but also being aware of what creates internal dampness and, try not to eat too much of it. Um, mm -hmm. Just recognizing what is helpful. I love juicing and just doing things that are, are nourishing to my body, eating fermented food. I have a huge passion for fermented food. I love eating it. It's like a meal in and of itself. I'll just sit there and eat kimchi. Some people are just like, what is going on with this girl? She's just sitting there eating kimchi or sauerkraut. I'm like, I love it. It's a good, it's amazing. Yeah. Watch your go. <laughs> exactly. And just finding a new balance in your body. And in your mind, because it's like, you're not the same person that you once were mm -hmm. physically, mentally, spiritually, all of it, because you're rebalancing and you're re becoming reborn through the enzymes. The enzymes are literally digesting things that do not want, need to be there any longer. 
-hmm. and finding that new balance is where most people really get or at least some of my some of my previous clients that didn't have good experiences they struggle they're like oh I've been in such a darkness and such a depression and I'm like it's that process of rebalancing I don't know anyone who's done a plant medicine ceremony who hasn't experienced that darkness who has not experienced that feeling of like oh whoa what happened you know this is a plant medicine this is literally plants it is something that you are it's not a cleanse it's like a, a reclamation a, an ultimate act of self-love or self-care because you're giving your body what it finally needs that you were never able to provide it and i think right. that in and of itself is just so powerful right and in the process of our restoration i like to call it the return to our natural order our way of being our, our soul's uh, nature. And in, in, in returning to that, um, you're, you're getting, you're getting to understand that the body's either going through one or two cycles anyway. It's either restoring or it's repairing. It's either going through a, a releasing or it's a rebuilding and regenerating. So it keeps your life really simple. You don't have to complicate it, guys, who are watching this. And I love doing these cleanses because your life, when, when you're not eating all the stuff you used to eat, your body's in cleanse mode all day long. You just learn how that how to operate during that time. And it's not that you're out of en energy. I mean, I've got more energy now. I'm almost 70. You know, I'm 68. And i got more energy now than I get in my 30s and 40s. I'm running circles around my friends. I'm up at 530. I'm nonstop till 10, 1030 at night. And the only thing I do... To, to maintain that, to me, it's like a marathon. I'll take I'll take 20 minute meditations and cat naps throughout the day, just so I can pace myself so the energy is consistent. I also change my clothes a lot because I'm into color therapy. <clears throat> Ooh, that's awesome! <laughs> oh, Super I learned cool. that from my mentors, and I did that at the retreat we just had. About every two or three hours, I would change from yellows to greens to blues. I ended up with white and ultraviolet at the end of the day. It's like, I'm just following the chakras. Let's go. <laughs> That's amazing. I, 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 I've always wondered why I've been super called. I was wearing orange earlier. Now, I don't know why I'm wearing black now. Um, <laughs> it's interesting what we're grav we gravitate towards. Also with food. I feel like some people are so gravitating towards like white bread, white yeah. food and, and things that are like, bland and have no substance no color i like to eat the rainbow i eat everything like i eat so much stuff that is just so local i just went to the farmer's market and just the array of colors that you maybe have never gravitated towards before after my first rainbow cleanse i didn't crave the same foods i totally shifted my diet i started eating incredibly intuitively i'd already been eating intuitively before but not in the same way that this, this made me, it just made me crave things that maybe my body needed more fermented food. I'd always felt weird eating kimchi or sauerkraut because my gut was a mess. And then once I started doing these cleanses, I started craving those things. Now my body is getting cleaner in my liver and I'm craving fat. And it's, mm -hmm. it's pretty wild to experience and to see it. It's not even just like experiencing it. Like you're seeing it firsthand happen in your body. You go to a restaurant, and you're just like, I don't want any of this. None of this sounds good. And experiencing that is... None of it does. That means you're setting free. You've been set free. The reason I bring up the addiction part about food being an addiction, because we're so neurotic, we're so obsessed, we're, we're so attached to the food as our lifeline to health. And you go study the breatharians and the fruitarians and the guys that are doing massive activities and behaviors on the planet, they don't even consider food as a source of that anymore. They're no different than us, but they have a rewiring and a perception that tells them, okay, there's cosmic energy around us. There's prana all around us. There's water in the air. There's molecules of, of hydrogen and oxygen and nitrogen. Ironically, we're all breatharians the moment you stop eating. I mean, if you fast for 23 hours, you're a breatharian for 23 hours a day. Yeah, you like break free of the pressure to consume. It's not even just like consuming food, it's consuming media, it's consuming shopping and just things to fulfill that like dopamine. Social media, things that we're so programmed to receive. No wonder people are so depressed because they're constantly seeking that next hit of smoking weed, smoking a vape, smoking things that like, 
are, are going to give you that, that like substance, but you really are lacking the substance because you're just going to feed that cycle. And then breaking free of it is not necessarily easy. It's that breaking of chains and, and breaking out of prison, <laughs> pretty much you're breaking out of prison. You're, you're sawing away at the, at the little boards to get out, to like climb out. And then halfway through you get stuck and it's like, it's, it's a process of swimming up uphill, like, like the salmon do, they swim upstream. Like you're swimming against a, an intense current of programming of genetics and maybe things that have been passed down to you generationally, karmically, lifetimes, like everything. And, and we don't realize honestly how simple it is when we break it down. Like it is a lot, it's a lot of things, but we have so much more free will and so much more power than I think we give ourselves credit for because we're never taught it. We're, we're not taught. taught it. And uh, religious teachings and even the new age teachings have tried to convince people that you don't have free will, which you know, that borderlines on saying, well, you're at the mercy of the universe. And if they want to mess with you, you, they can, but it's not true. You have God given free will. You have divine right to your, to tap into your inheritance, whether it's health, prosperity, intimate relationships. Uh, it's all right here, but we're not programmed to look at what's right here. So the, the Zen clans is, is, <clears throat> it's a new frontier. As we've been evolving, evolving as a human species, this represents the evolution at the, this point for me, the Zen cleanse. I mean, I teach a lot about urine therapy and it complement each other. Um, and we're both at, we're, we're all, we moved to the place as a human species to have these answers, to have these solutions. And this was, this to me, is a demonstration of how much we've evolved. I feel like, and especially now, there's things that are becoming available that maybe weren't available many years ago because our planet wasn't ready. We were not ready for that evolution of consciousness. We were not ready for this high vibrational food that cleanses the body because people were so programmed and so stuck. And it's like, of course, these enzymes are fermented. So they needed to go through their, their consciousness fermentation so that now that the fermentation is, is ready, we're ready to consume it or only the people who feel called to it. So it's like, some people are like, oh, that's a scam. And it's like, well, you're not called to it then. For me, it was like, I didn't have a single dollar in my bank account, I had no, I had no money. And somehow I made it work. Somehow I magnetized the enzymes to my house and they arrived and I did a meditation next to them. And I was like having all these psychedelic visions and dreams. And I was like, what is this meditation? What's going on? So I asked Daniel and he's like, you have tapped into the essence of the enzymes. And I was like, oh, this is so cool. I've never experienced. So I like laid with a bottle on my chest. It was really wild. Like I did it intuitively too. And it like really got me into the feeling of getting ready to do a rainbow cleanse. Did the rainbow cleanse absolutely whoop my ass? Yeah, it was intense. It was, it was not for the faint of heart, but did it absolutely show me the trajectory that I was going? Yes. Now I'm a health coach. Now I teach people who go through these. It's like, Nothing worth having is easy. It can be easy, but it can also be a process of shedding layers. And I think that was what this, the first cleanse that I did. I've done now, cumulatively, probably about almost 30 of the cleanses. And it's of a lot. Variety, of the variety of cleanses. Yeah, I think I've done, I've only done one rainbow cleanse, but I've done 17 liver cleanses and 13 intestinal cleanses. I'm going to do my 18th and 19th liver cleanse in the next couple of weeks after my parents leave. And, you know, it's like some people are like, oh, my gosh, I can't do that. And it's like everyone's journey is different. You know, my journey is going to be different than theirs. And how many times it needs to take me to get through a bunch of gunk in my liver is going to be different than other people. And, you know, you never can compare your journey to someone else. But it is a journey. It's a, it's a road. It's a path. It's a marathon. It's not something you're going to just sprint a hundred meters and you're done. It's not a one day thing. You're going to be done. It's like that process of just committing to yourself, trusting yourself and trusting the work of the enzymes. Enzymes trusting. are used for everything. Every metabolic reaction in the body is, is facilitated by enzymes. Right. These enzymes have an intelligence. These enzymes have, uh, I think the enzymes came with blueprints. They know genetic coding. 
They know what, what it's like to have a brand new cell, trillions of brand new cells. And trusting this process is part of the process. Trusting the wisdom of, of the little tiny molecules that are way smart. They're so intelligent. Right. So the, the body is performing its job. Now, if we put enough, cancel, cancel, when, I just took that word and turned it around. When we put enough energy and attention that we put in our lifetime to try to find, seek and find the perfect remedy, the perfect supplement, the perfect food, we put that same amount of energy and commitment into these enzymes in this Zen Cleanse program, you'll not only be amazed, but you'll have a quality of life you never imagined. I feel like I'm living proof of that. You know, I was super unhappy in Colorado living with my parents, super sick, couldn't get out of the cycles of trauma and addiction and just all of the things. I didn't know how I was going to be able to move out. Then all of a sudden I just went through a process of literally doing liver cleanses like every two weeks. I was drinking enzymes like tons. I was drinking like close to 180 milliliters of enzymes daily. Like I was just craving it. My body was like absorbing all of it. Then synchronistically, a friend was moving off the island in Kauai. My boyfriend and I took over his lease. We found out we got our lease on June 27th of last, of last year. We moved July 27th. Randomly, American Express sent us an extra $300 in flight credit. No plane was, planes were delayed. We didn't lose anything. Nothing was broken. And then as soon as I got here, I felt my nervous system relax. And I've never felt more aligned and more at home than I do here. Is this going to be my forever home? I have no idea. But for the process, it is a great place to recalibrate. Kauai is very charged. There is so much mana here. There's so much energy. And it's not for the faint of heart. Most people get kicked off because it's so intense. It is such a process of feeling like you're in a washing machine. Some days I'm like, am I on a wash cycle? Is today a dry cycle? Is today a spin? Like, or am I going to stop? Like, it, it's more apparent when you leave and come back and you're like, well, okay, what am I experiencing? So it's been this like deep, deep valleys and deep peaks. And a lot of people are not equipped to experience that or they're not ready to experience it. So they have to leave. For me, I felt like, nope, I'm hunkering down, going into a meditative space. What comes is coming, but I'm going to work through it. I'm going to move through it. I'm going to transmute it. And that's, I think, why it, I've experienced so much here, so much wow. clarity. And you, you, you have gained the certainty and the courage that it takes to be able to face whatever arises in you. Exactly. And that's the true warrior. Whatever comes up in your personal experience, you're going to face it. You're going to rise above it and you're not going to run from it. And yeah, those no people running. that are willing to look at their shadows, look at their belief systems, willing to do the deep dive. Are, yeah, are, they're getting their life back and they're helping many, many more people to find their way back to balance. The Zen cleanse has a magical way of doing it. Exactly. You have to be ruthless in the pursuit of the life that you're desiring. You know, you can't just like dabble. You can't just like halfway wade into the water. You have to like jump. You have to cannonball into the water. You have to get in there and really get rolled by the waves. I'm still nervous about the ocean I still um, I still struggle getting in the water because it's it is powerful and I, it's definitely something that brings up a lot of fear for me but the more that I avoid it the worse it's going to be and then I'm not going to want to get in the water and I live around water so it's a it's a whole process of and I my cheesy way of explaining how I moved here is I followed the path of the water from the top of the mountains in Colorado down into the ocean and it's just sort of the the paradox of my sister state of feeling mile high elevation to being at sea level in a really potent place and to see the changes that I've experienced in a year and almost a year and a half is is insane I've become like you, 20 different people in that time did you realize and I, I was going to do an illustration but you got us on another point you realize and I, I kept noticing there were seagulls that were hanging around certain parts of Boulder I'm in Boulder Colorado and there were seagulls hanging around and after a while, I kept meditating and go, why are seagulls here? They're ocean birds. They should be on a beach. They're tracking their radar. They're, 
their tracking device still thinks this is an ocean, which tells me this once was an ocean. Whoa, I didn't even so think about there's, that. So there's an infinity between you and Hawaii. Now, my connection with Hawaii is that I grew up in the desert of El Paso, Texas, which is sea level. And when I got to Hawaii, it didn't take long for me to realize, oh, I'm back at sea level. And there's all these connections. They're a lot deeper than just the surface, but you're starting to see how they piece together. Uh, totally. Oh, man. It's powerful. <laughs> I have one other question, though. It's yeah, you got a timer kind of, too. yeah, I know. <laughs> I only have the free Zoom because I haven't been connected to Daniel's, but it's perfect because it, it allows me to, because I sometimes get people who just, like who don't know how to answer my questions. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, I've only had a couple of those. And I'm like, but um, okay, let's hear the question. My, it is, how do you, um, what do you do to create a better self and a better world? What I do to create a better self and better world is a lot of self-care, a lot of self-love, a self-nurturing, uh, observe your mind, how it operates, choose new thoughts, and the best thing I have done for myself in years is to surrender to community. When I'm hosting these retreats, you realize that your stuff, your shit doesn't have much of a chance when people are loving you. And so that's been really healthy for me is to have practices that nurture you, nurture me, that I, I can feel the difference. Because you got your go-tos. If I'm in trouble, I got that enema bag. I'm going to get a massage uh, next week. Uh, in my lifestyle, I get a massage every two weeks. You know, I'm doing the Zen cleanses. I'm doing the urine therapy. Uh, I got to the point where I've got it fine dialed in. So I'm not making the destructive choices that I used to make. The addiction is gone, the things that I used to be hooked on. And that gives you a wonderful sense of peace as well as the ability to stay centered and hold space for people who come to you off balance. And there's a lot of people that are going through a breakdown, which is really a breakthrough. So it's nice to be in a loving space to show them why they are where they are and help them make new choices. Wow. Yes. That's amazing. I love that. It's, I love to end with that kind of question, just to really circle back around. And I have no idea when it's going to cut us off. <laughs> also, it always says less than a minute. And who knows but uh, send me a recording yeah. of this that would be great absolutely yeah thank you so much for chatting with me this was beautiful i really enjoyed this next week harry manatee is going to interview me about zen cleanse oh 